Okay, my parents were, they came from humble beginnings. They met at a college in South Dakota, and by the time they were my age, they had six children. My father was a professor of math, and this picture was taken in Holland during his first sabbatical. This trip would create in all of us a kind of wanderlust, especially for my eldest brother, Mark. He's the determined looking one in the middle. <laughs> I soon found out that the world is a dangerous place. Most of my siblings were gymnasts, so by the time I was four, I'd learned to do flips off the couch. In an effort to get some mattresses for a flip session, a ping pong table fell on me and broke my femur. I'd spend months recovering, carried around in a body cast. As the youngest, I had the advantage of learning life lessons from my siblings. Mark wanted to be a writer, and since our year in Holland, he wanted to travel the world. He worked various jobs, on the railroad, in a lumber mill, but always continued to work on his writings. I tended to think visually and thought I'd pursue a career in illustration. I found it easier to express myself with images, and I, thought, and I began to realize that each of us has a time limit, that we all have expiration dates, and it would be a good idea to make the best of the time we have available. To me, the ultimate irony was that none of us could ever know the answer to this question, how long will I live? And I began to contemplate humans. They didn't always make sense. I began to see qualities in people that I didn't admire. Boys being cruel to each other, being cruel to animals. And I wondered why. This drawing I called Envy. The one on the right is sad because he's jealous of the other man's good looks. <laughs> Mark's room was like a cave of books. I remember him talking about one book in particular, The Population Bomb by Paul Ehrlich. We humans were a much bigger problem than I had imagined. We were multiplying at an unsustainable rate and that this meant less room for everything else. As the sixth child, I was glad my parents hadn't read this book. <laughs> why was the world so unfair? And why were humans so sure that they were the most important beings on the planet? I wasn't convinced. The more I learned, the more I began to dislike our species. And my drawings began to reflect a longing for justice. <laughs> Luckily, I had a wonderful family to keep me on track. On my father's second and third sabbaticals, we would live in South Africa. It was during apartheid. I and three younger siblings were going to a segregated school while my dad worked in Soweto, the township outside of Johannesburg. At the age of 17, my parents allowed me to leave school in order to ride my bicycle around South Africa with my brothers. My parents continued to encourage us to go abroad. Just out of high school, I'd fallen in with a tough crap. One of my roommates would go to prison, the other to rehab. I worked different jobs to save up for a trip to Southeast Asia. This is Borobudur in, in uh, Java. On the west coast of Sumatra, I came across this, a stall in a market which was considered the local pharmacy. It was rhino horn, various monkey skulls, turtles, gallbladders, even what looked like a freshly severed domestic, uh, domesticated cat's head. I wanted to see these animals, but I wanted to see them alive and in their habitat. But the trip brought me back around. I enrolled in college and continued to develop my, my art. The, this painting was inspired by a baboon that had jumped on our car in South Africa and ripped off the windshield wiper. <laughs> The years in Africa had a big influence on me, and I felt a strong desire to return. So I applied to a program with the United Nations and ended up working with refugees in the Kakuma refugee camp. These Nuer boys w had lost their families in the long war with Sudan, and I felt a responsibility to help them. I began to think that I could help by capturing their stories on camera and sharing them with people back in the States. While in the camp, I worked primarily with the handicapped. It was apparent to me that although they had it even worse than the rest, they had the best attitudes towards life, and they worked hard. When I returned, I began giving talks around Wyoming and Colorado about the plight of, refu of these refugees. At the end of a talk in Fort Collins, a man from the audience introduced himself. His name was Warren Garst. He was the cameraman for Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. This just happened to be the one program that my parents allowed us to watch. <laughs> It dawned on me that much of my interest in animals was due to his hard work. And when I started to name the gorillas he filmed with Diane Fossey, he invited me to his house for lunch. In his office, as a map of the, all the places that he worked, in his 25 years filming wildlife, he traveled almost everywhere. I noticed there was one area that he hadn't worked, no doubt because of the Cold War. 
We became good friends in a few late, in a few years, and later he passed on to me all of the 16 millimeter gear from Wild Kingdom, and now my students at UCSB are getting to shoot with the same gear. I realized that if I really wanted to make a career working with cameras, I'd better learn all the technical aspects, so I moved to California to attend Stanford. I received my master's degree in documentary filmmaking in 1999 and have since been making films. I took this photo uh, on a film shoot in Dominican Republic. It's of Vladimir Guerrero, who's the baseball star. Uh, and I would ma make good on my promise to help refugees in Africa. I was hired to shoot a film about a group of musicians living in, in a camp in Guinea. They call themselves the Refugee All-Stars. This film would win various awards at festivals worldwide, but more importantly, it launched the careers, their careers. They've played music festivals from Fujirak, Bonnaroo, Central Park to Switzerland. Here they are with Aerosmith. They are now known all over the world for their positive messages. And just a few days ago, they released their third studio album. Uh, they'll be coming to Joshua Tree here fairly soon. Uh, and so it seems the stars have aligned in some ways. I love the work that I get to do. Uh, this is hard to see, but a friend of mine took this photo of me while I was filming up on the Eel River in Northern California. Uh, I've had m many great influences in my life, and um, as for my overly ambitious brother, I would imagine he's somewhere above 25,000 feet right about now. Uh, he became a writer, and uh, since Holland, has never stopped exploring the world. Uh, if anybody wants to follow this, he's uh, currently blogging for National Geographic uh, as he climbs Everest. So thank you all very much.